Sutra. Disciples of the Buddha, for instance, when a goldsmith, well skilled at smelting gold, repeatedly pulls it through the fire, it becomes progressively more bright and pure, subtle, a supple, blunt, and accomplished, and capable of being worked in accord with his intent. The Bodhisattva is also like this. He makes offerings to all Buddhas and teaches and transforms living beings, all of which is cultivation of the dramas of purification of the grounds. Then he takes all of those gurus and completely transfers them to the ground of all wisdom. Thus, he becomes progressively more bright and pure, subdued, compliant, and accomplished. And capable of acting, capable of acting in accord with his intent. Disciples of the Buddha, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, when dwelling upon this, the first ground shoot from where all Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, and good wise advisers are searched out and requested within these grounds the marks and the fruit obtained with no weariness. Or situation in order to accomplish the dramas of these grounds, they should also, from where all Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, and good wise advisers are, search out and request within the second ground the marks and the fruit obtained with no weariness or situation, in order to accomplish the dramas of that ground. We should also, in that way, search out and request within the third, the fourth, the fifth. The sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, and the tenth grounds, the marks and the fruit obtained with no weariness or situation, in order to accomplish the dramas of those grounds. This bodhisattva is good at knowing remedies for all obstructions to the grounds, good at knowing the accomplishment and destruction of the grounds, good at knowing the marks and fruits of the grounds. Commentary: Varacharya Bodhisattva again says to all the Bodhisattva, all of you disciples of the Buddha, for instance, I give you an analogy for this principle. What is it like? It is just as when a goldsmith, well skilled at smelting gold, repeatedly pulls it through the fire. A goldsmith uses all kinds of clever and skillful methods to smelt gold. And refine it. Time after time, he uses fire on it, and it becomes progressively more bright and pure. When it has been through the fire once, the gold is just that much more purified. After repeated smeltings, it becomes a unalloyed gold, without the least admixture, and is supple, pliant, and accomplished. And capable of being worked in accord with his intent, when the gold has been fired to the point to being very soft and pliant, so there is no way it could break. It is pliant and accomplished. You can make whatever you want out of it in accord with your intent. One can use the gold to make all kinds of ornaments to adorn one's person. The Bodhisattva is also like this. He makes offerings to all Buddhas. The Bodhisattva, in cultivating all of the dharmas of regulating the grounds, is also like that. First of all, he vastly cultivates the giving of offerings, and he teaches and transforms living beings. He uses kindness, compassion, joy, renunciation, patience, vigor. Those parameters. To teach and transform living beings, all of which is cultivation of the dramas of purification of the grounds. He enables all living beings to be able to cultivate the dharma doors of purification of the ten grounds. Then he takes all of those good rules and completely transfers them. The good rules that have been amassed from cultivation. He completely uses to make transference to the ground of all wisdom, the dramas of the ten grounds. Thus, he becomes progressively more bright and pure. Every day, he understands the drama doors of the ten grounds better, and each day he is more pure, subdued, compliant, and accomplished. That 
he is subdued and compliant means this bodhisattva hasn't the least bit of temper and not the slightest affliction. At all times, he is very kind, compassionate, joyous, and renouncing, and accomplishes the draw of practice of patience, and is capable of acting in accord with his intent. Whatever Dharma draw he wants to employ, he is able to employ. Disciples of the Buddha, Vara Treasury Bodhisattva again said to the Bodhisattva, all of you disciples of the Buddha, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, when dwelling upon this, the first ground shoot from where all Buddhas, Bodhisattva, and good wise advisors are searched and request within these grounds. When the great Bodhisattva who cultivates the Bodhisattva conduct any masses, all kinds of guru certifies so the position of the ground of happiness. You should, from where all Buddhas and great Bodhisattvas and all good knowing advisors are, investigate the Dhamma doors of all the grounds. If there are places one does not understand, one asks the Buddhas, the Bodhisattvas, the good wise advisors within these ten grounds about the marks and the fruit obtained, about the characteristics one experiences in cultivating them along with the water fruit positions to be obtained in the future alike. He does this without weariness or satiation. He does the seeking out oneself, and the requesting is that of requesting all the Buddhas, the Bodhisattvas, and all good knowing advisors. It's that way every day. It's all the time that way, with no weariness or satiation. There's no saying, I've cultivated enough, and then not investigating or being lazy. He is vigorous all the time. In order to accomplish the dramas of these grounds, his reason is that he wants to bring the dramas of the ten grounds to accomplishment. You should also, from where all Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, and good wise advisors are, search out and request within the second ground the marks, the fruit obtained. The first ground is that way. If one if one wishes to cultivate the dramas of the second of the ten grounds, one should again request them from where the Buddhas, the Bodhisattvas, and the good knowing advisors are. One should seek them out and investigate them. If there are places one does not understand, one requests the characteristics of what one experiences along with the fruit positions one obtains with no weariness or satiation in order to accomplish the dramas of that ground. He should also in that way search out and request within the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth and the tenth grounds, the marks and the fruit obtained. When one intends to bring to accomplishment the dramas of the third ground, the fourth ground, up to and including the dramas of the tenth ground, one should investigate and ask all the Buddhas, all Bodhisattvas, and all good knowing advisors the characteristics of what one goes through on each of these grounds and the fruit positions one obtains. One should do this with no weariness or situation. This too is without growing tired. In order to accomplish the dramas of those grounds, this is also because of wanting to accomplish the dramas of the ten grounds. This bodhisattva is good at knowing remedies for all obstructions to the grounds. He is skilled in the knowledge of what obstacles arise on each ground and what methods to employ to counteract them. He is good at knowing the accomplishment and destruction of the grounds. He is skilled in knowing how the Dhamma doors of the Ten Grounds are accomplished and how they are not accomplished and good at knowing the marks and fruits of the grounds. He is also skilled in the knowledge of the characteristics of the Ten Grounds and how one obtained pertains to their fruit positions. Sutra, good, knowing, uh, good at knowing the attainment and conservation of the grounds. 
good at knowing the purification of the dharmas of the ground, good at knowing the practices in turn for each ground, good at knowing what holds and does not hold for each ground, good at knowing the most supreme wisdom for each ground, good at knowing the irreversibilities of each good, good at knowing how to purify and regulate all the bodhisattvas grounds up to and including in turn entering the ground of the first come one, disciples of the Buddha. The Bodhisattva in that way is good at knowing the marks of the grounds. Starting with the first ground, he gives rise to practice which is uninterrupted. He continues in that way until he enters the tenth ground without interruption. Due to the light of wisdom of all those grounds, he accomplishes the first common's light of wisdom. Disciples of the Buddha, he is like the merchant leader who is skilled in expedient methods. When he is about to lead a group of merchants to visit a great city, before they have set out, he first inquires about the merits and drawbacks of the route, the halting places along it, and whether it is safe or not. Afterwards, equipped with provisions for the road, he does what needs to be done. Disciples of the Buddha, the great merchant leader, although he has not yet taken a step, is able to know all matters concerning safety on the road. He skillfully uses wisdom to plan, estimate, and consider and prepare what is required so that they will not run short. He then leads the group of merchants until they safely reach the great city. He and the group of people completely avoid all disasters. Disciples of the Buddha The Bodhisattva that merchant leader is also that way. While dwelling on the first ground, he is good at knowing remedies for obstructions to all grounds, up to and including being good at knowing how to purify all the Bodhisattva grounds and in turn enter the ground of the first Kamwan. Afterwards, equipped with the provisions of blessings and wisdom, he leads all living beings through the wilderness of birth and death with its places of danger until they safely arrive at the city of Savana. He and all the living beings do not experience disasters. Therefore, the Bodhisattva should never be lacked and should cultivate the most supreme, pure karma of all grounds, up to and including tending towards and entering the ground of the first common's wisdom. Disciples of the Buddha, this is called the, a summary discussion of the Bodhisattva Mahasattva's entry to the door of the first Bodhisattva ground. If discussed at length, there are limitless and boundless hundreds of thousands of Asamkhyayas of particulars. Commentary The Bodhisattva is good at knowing the attainment and cultivation of the grounds. A Bodhisattva who has certified to the first ground, the ground of happiness, is good at knowing how to cultivate each ground. He is good at knowing the purification of the dramas of the ground, good at knowing the practices in turn for each ground. He is also good at knowing for all the ten grounds how one goes in turn from the first ground to the second ground, from the second ground to the third ground, up to and including how to cultivate the tenth ground. He is good at knowing what holds and does not hold for each ground. He is skilled as well at knowing what is right and what is wrong for each ground. He is good at knowing the most supreme wisdom for each ground. Each ground has its own particular wisdom, its own particular jobs of practice. He is good at knowing the irreversibilities of each good, good at knowing how to purify and regulate all the Bodhisattva's grounds up to and including in turn answering the ground of the first come one. He knows it all up to and including what one goes through in order to obtain entry 
the certification to the fruit of the ground of the first come one. Disciples of the Buddha, Vada Treasury Bodhisattva again calls out, All of you disciples of the Buddha, the Bodhisattva in that way is good at knowing the marks of the grouse, he is good at knowing the characteristics of each grout. Starting with the first grout, he gives rise to practice which is uninterrupted. He continues in that way until he enters the tenth grout without interruption. Due to the light of wisdom of all those grouts, he accomplishes the first common's light of wisdom. He is able to obtain the light of wisdom of a Buddha. Vara Treasury Bodhisattva again calls out, All of you disciples of the Buddha, he is like a merchant leader, he said. Now I'll give you an analogy. He is like a merchant leader. He is skilled in expanding methods. He is skilled in knowing all expanding drama doors. When he is about to lead a group of merchants to visit a great city before they have set out, he first inquires about the merits and drawbacks of the route. When he is going to head up a party of merchants to visit a metropolis on business, in advance of their trip, he finds out in which places the road is easy to traverse and in which places passage is not easy. He determines which places are dangerous and which places are safe. He learns it all. He also ascertains the halting places along it, that is, what places that are where one can stop for the night and whether it is safe or not. He finds out which situations are safe and which are not. Afterwards, equipped with provisions for the road, he does what needs to be done. Afterwards, they all prepare for the provisions, that is, the money to be used, and he goes about doing his job. Disciples of the Buddha, Vada Treasury, again says that great making leader, although he has not yet taken a step, is able to know all matters concerning safety on the road. That great entrepreneur who does business on a large scale, even though he has not yet sent out on the road, already knows all the safety factors and dangers along the, road, the route. He skillfully uses wisdom to plan, estimate, and consider and prepares what is required. He prepares a sufficient quantity of things that they will need to use so that they will not run short. He then leads the group of mechanics until they safely reach that great city. They arrive at the great metropolis to which they want to go. He and the group of people completely avoid all disasters. They safely reach the place to which they want to go. Disciples of the Buddha, Vara Treasury Bodhisattva again says, All of you disciples of the Buddha, the Bodhisattva that Mekan leader is also that way. The Bodhisattva is like a Mekan leader while dwelling on the first ground, the ground of happiness. He is good at knowing remedies for obstructions to all grounds. He is good at knowing what methods to use to counteract any obstacles to cultivation that may arise on any one of the grounds, up to and including being good at knowing how to purify all the Bodhisattva grounds. He knows all how all of the Bodhisattvas of the ten grounds can attain to purity and in turn answer the ground of the first come one. Afterwards, equipped with the provisions, provisions of blessings and wisdom, he leads all living beings through the wideness of birth and death. He guides all living beings through the wideness of the revolving wheel of birth and death, with its places of danger, until they safely arrive at the city of Savina. They arrive at the city of all wisdom and he and all the living beings do not experience disasters. The Bodhisattva himself and all the living beings with him have no disasters. Therefore, the Bodhisattva should never be lax as a consequence of this. 
the Bodhisattva should at all times never be lax and should cultivate the most supreme pure karma of all grounds. You should diligently cultivate the Dharma jaws of the ten grounds, the pure and most supreme way karma, up to and including tending towards and entering the ground of the first common's wisdom. You should do so until he reaches the fruit position of Buddhahood, disciples of the Buddha. Vara Treasury Bodhisattva again says, All of you disciples of the Buddha, this is called a summary discussion of the Bodhisattva Mahasattva's entry to the door of the first Bodhisattva ground. This is the Bodhisattva Mahasattva's entry to the Dharma door of the first ground. If discussed at length, there are limitless and boundless hundreds of thousands of Asamkhiyas of particulars. If expanded upon, it has a great many different aspects. Sutra, disciples of the Buddha, the Bodhisattva who dwells upon this, the first ground, for the most part, acts as king of Jambuvipa. He is powerful, honored, and sovereign, and constantly protects the proper Dharma. He is able to use great giving to gather in living beings. He is skilled at writing living beings of the defilement of stinginess. He constantly practices great giving without exhaustion or end. Giving pleasing words, beneficial practices, and identity in actions. All such karma that is created is not separate from mindfulness of the Buddha, not separate from mindfulness of the Dharma, not separate from mindfulness of the Sangha, not separate from mindfulness of the Bodhisattva, not separate from mindfulness of the Bodhisattvas of identical practice, not separate from mindfulness of the Bodhisattva practices, not separate from mindfulness of the Paramitas, not separate from mindfulness of all grounds, not separate from mindfulness of the powers, not separate from mindfulness of the fearlessnesses, not separate from mindfulness of the uncommon Buddha dramas, up to and including not separate from mindfulness of endowment with the wisdom of all wisdom of all modes. Commentary Vada Treasury Bodhisattva again called out and said, All of you disciples of the Buddha, the Bodhisattva who dwells upon this, the first ground, for the most part acts as king of Jambuvipa. The great Bodhisattva who cultivates the Bodhisattva conduct and amasses all kinds of good rules regularly becomes a kind of Jambuvipa when he accomplishes the first ground, that of happiness. He is powerful, honored, and sovereign. He either is someone with a great deal of money or extremely sovereign and at ease and constantly protects the proper drama. He is able to use great giving to gather in living beings and cause them to bring forth a great thought of body. He is skilled at writing living beings of the defilement of stinginess. He is able to get rid of living beings' bad habit, the fault of stinginess. He constantly practices in great giving without exhaustion or end. He is always practicing giving on a large scale and his giving never ends. Giving, pleasing words, beneficial practices, and identity in actions, all such karma that is created is not separate from mindfulness of the Buddha, not separate from mindfulness of the Dharma, not separate from mindfulness of the Sangha. No matter what good karma is created, it is never separate from mindfulness of the Triple Jewel, the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. It is not separate from mindfulness of the Bodhisattva, not separate from mindfulness of the Bodhisattvas of identical practice, not to separate from mindfulness of the Bodhisattvas of identical practice is also mindfulness of the Sangha. It is not separate from mindfulness of the Bodhisattva practices which are cultivated. It is not separate from mindfulness of the paramitas, the dramas of arrival at the other shore. It is not separate from mindfulness of the wisdom of all grounds. 
it is not separate from mindfulness of the powers, the Buddha's ten powers. It is not separate from mindfulness of the feelingsnesses, the four feelingsnesses. It is not separate from mindfulness of the uncommon Buddha dramas, the eighteen dramas special to the to a Buddha, up to and including. It is not separate from mindfulness of endowment with the wisdom. Of all wisdom, of all most, all the wisdoms of a Buddha Sutra, he further makes the following reflection: I should, among all living beings, be a leader, be supreme, be especially supreme, be wonderful, be subtle, and wonderful, be superior, be unsurpassed, be a guide, be a general, be a chief. Up to and including being one with the wisdom of all wisdoms upon whom one may rely. This Bodhisattva, if he wants to renounce the whole life within the Buddha Dharma, diligently cultivates with vigor, and then can leave the home, his wife and children, and the five desires. He relies upon the first comma's teaching, leaves the home life, and studies the way. Commentary. He further makes the following reflection: The Bodhisattva of the first ground, the ground of happiness, also makes the following contemplation, saying, "I should, among all living beings, be a leader. I is the Bodhisattva referring to himself. I should be supreme, be especially supreme. I should be an especially outstanding and superior person. I should be wonderful." Among living beings, I should be an inconceivable person. I should be subtle and wonderful. Among living beings, I should be an unsurpassed, deep, profound, subtle, and wonderfully inconceivable person. I should be superior. I should be a lofty and superior person. I should be unsurpassed. Among living beings, I should be an unsurpassed person. I should be a guide. I should. In the midst of all living beings, act as their guide. I should be a general among living beings. I should be a great general. I should be a chief. I should be a principal among living beings, up to and including being one with the wisdom of all wisdom upon whom one may rely. I should be someone who has the wisdom of a Buddha upon whom living beings can rely. This Bodhisattva, if he wants to renounce the home life, if he wants to leave home, within the Buddha Dharma, diligently cultivates with vigor, and then he can leave the home. He can give up his family, his wife and children, and the five desires: wealth, sex, fame, food, and sleep. He relies upon the third karma's teaching. He relies upon the teaching dharma spoken by the Buddhas, leaving、uh, leaves the home life and studies the way. He leaves the home of afflictions, leaves the worldly home, and leaves the home of the three realms. Sutra. Thereupon, after leaving home, he diligently cultivates with vigor. Within the space of a thought, he attends a hundred samadhis. He comes to see a hundred Buddhas. He is able to know a hundred Buddha's spiritual powers. He is able to quake a hundred Buddha lands. He is able to go beyond a hundred Buddha lands. He is able to illumine a hundred Buddha lands. He is able to teach and transform the living beings of a hundred worlds. He is able to live for a hundred compas. He is able to know the boundaries of before and afterwards. The events of a hundred compass for each, he is able to enter a hundred drama doors. He is able to manifest a hundred bodies. With every body, he is able to manifest a hundred bodhisattvas as his retinue. If he employs especially supreme power, if bodhisattva vows to manifest at ease, he surpasses that number. In a hundred compass, a thousand compass, a hundred thousand compass, up to and including a hundred thousand million nayutas of compass, the number could not be counted or known. At that time, Varacharya Bodhisattva, wishing to restate his meaning, spoke in verses, saying, "Commentary: 
Thereupon, after leaving home, he diligently cultivates with vigor. After the Bodhisattva has brought forth the thought for Bodhi, he renounced the world and left the whole life in order to seek the unsurpassed way. He very diligently and earnestly cultivates with courageous vigor. Within the space of a thought, he attains a hundred samadhis. Within the interval of a single thought, he obtains more than a hundred kinds of proper receptions, proper concentrations, that kind of wisdom. He comes to see a hundred Buddhas. When in a single interval of thought, he is able to attain a hundred kinds of samadhis, then he is able to see a hundred Buddhas of a hundred worlds. He is able to know a hundred Buddhas' spiritual powers. He is able to know all of the powers of spiritual penetrations of a hundred Buddhas of a hundred worlds. He is able to quick a hundred Buddha lands. The Bodhisattva is able to use spiritual penetrations and cause a hundred Buddha lands to tremble and quick in six ways. He is able to go beyond a hundred Buddha lands. The power of his spiritual penetrations is able to transcend a hundred Buddha lands. He is able to illumine a hundred Buddha lands. His light too is able to light up as many as a hundred Buddha lands. He is able to teach and transform the living beings of a hundred worlds. Within a single interval of thought, he can teach and transform as many as a hundred Buddha lands living beings. He is able to live for a hundred compass. He is able to maintain his life for a hundred great compass. He is able to know the boundaries of before and afterwards and the events of a hundred compass for each. He knows a hundred compass before and he knows a hundred compass afterwards, knowing all of the events within them. He is able to answer a hundred Dharma doors. He is able to manifest a hundred bodies. Within this very world, he can make appear a hundred bodies and go to other worlds to teach and transform living beings. With everybody, he is able to manifest a hundred bodhisattvas. He can use spiritual penetrations to make appear by transformation a hundred bodhisattvas as his retinue. They act as his retainers. If he employs especially supreme power of bodhisattva, vows to manifest at ease, he surpasses that number. In a hundred compass, a thousand compass, a hundred thousand compass, up to and including a hundred thousand million nayutas of compass. Should it be the case that the Bodhisattva has extraordinary and especially supreme vow power and manifests at ease, he goes beyond that number, up to and including going beyond as many as a hundred thousand million nayutas of compass. The number could not be counted or no. From this, it can be seen that if a Bodhisattva has extraordinary vow power, his merit and virtue exceed those of the previously described Bodhisattvas to the point that they cannot be counted or no. At that time, Vara Treasury Bodhisattva, wishing to restate his meaning, spoke in verses, saying, Wanting to repeat those principles, he used verses to speak for everyone. Sutra, should someone assemble multitudes of good, he becomes endowed with white, pure dharmas. He makes offerings to the honored one of gods and humans, and follows a path of kindness and compassion. His faith and understanding are most vast and great. His resolutions and inclinations to a pure, intent upon the search for a Buddha's wisdom. He brings forth this thought unsurpassed. Having purified all the powers of knowledge, along with the foolishnesses as well, and having accomplished all the Buddha dramas, he saves and gathers in the flocks of beings. In order to obtain great kindness and compassion, and to turn the supreme Dharma will to adorn and purify the Buddha countries, he brings forth his thought, most supreme. Commentary, should someone assemble multitudes of good, he becomes endowed with white, pure dramas. This says, if a Bodhisattva cultivates 
the dose of practice cultivated by bodhisattvas and accumulates various kinds of good rules because of having a great deal of merit and virtue from good rules. He eliminates all defined dharmas so that all that remain are pure dharmas. He makes offerings to the honored one of gods and humans. He is able to make offerings to all Buddhas and follows a path of kindness and compassion. He constantly teaches and transforms living beings using kindness, compassion, joy, and renunciation. Those four limitless minds to teach and transform living beings. His faith and understanding are most vast and great. His faith, along with the principles that he understands, are both extremely vast and great. His resolutions and inclinations too are pure. All of his resolutions, as well as what he likes, are pure. Intent upon the search for a Buddha's wisdom, he brings forth this thought unsurpassed. His determination is to seek wisdom, which is the same as that of a Buddha. So he brings forth the thought for unsurpassed body, having purified all the powers of knowledge, along with the fearlessnesses as well, and having accomplished all the Buddha dramas, he saves and gathers in the flocks of beings. He has purified all the powers of all wisdom, in addition to the freedom from fear. He has brought to accomplishment all of the Dharma doors spoken by the Buddha. He saves and protects all living beings. In order to obtain great kindness and compassion and to turn the Supreme Dharma will to adorn and purify the Buddha countries, he brings forth this thought most supreme. In order to acquire mind of great kindness and compassion, and also in order to turn the will of all the most supreme dramas, and so that he may adorn and purify all Buddha's lands, he brings forth his thought for most supreme body.